Welcome one and all to another random late night stream by me, Sam Foote. This is the Art of Ideas. Yeah, so, I don't know. I just kind of felt like doing something really chill, super mellow. And uh, <clears throat> let me tell you about this, what we got going on. Look at this big fucking mess. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, I just ripped this board out from behind here. Several more to go. Um, this was a painting in progress. Uh, I had started a painting on this board. Got maybe 10 minutes into it. Put it back there. It sat back there for years. Now I want this real estate back. So that's the story on this dude. Yesterday, I basically uh, just used some rags and... Uh, Rubbed in some some random dark color over uh, the raw masonite. You can still see the raw masonite showing through here. Basically, I just I took this old uh, piece that I had, just kind of like lightly sketched out a couple little things for a landscape that I was thinking about doing. Never really got anywhere with it. Um, I decided I just want to rock out and have have some fun, and uh, I'm experimenting. Just like, just like always. And uh, today we are kind of, I'm just trying to one-stroke everything. Um, this is going to take a lot of refinement, a lot of, uh, a lot of layering, as I usually do. Um, but I'm trying to reduce my layers down to a couple few. Um, I'm just going super impasto, like super thick paint right off the bat. And, uh, yeah. Just kind of try to uh, to have some fun and uh, lighten up the world a little bit. <clears throat> so this is one of those rare cases where I am actually using a bit of a photo reference, and uh, I'm not really sticking to the photo reference too much. Uh, I accidentally almost just shut off the stream. That's hilarious. Checking everything, making sure everything's groovy. I don't know how, how long this stream's gonna go. Uh, I'm running on battery power off my laptop, so that could be a little sketch. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not seeing my battery. Oh, there we are. And it's dropping like a stone. All right. I might have to bring my charger over here actually and plug my laptop in. Might be a smart move, but let's let's get going. Um, I'll do that in a few minutes, maybe when I need a break. I'm not very far into this. Last night I got a little bit buzzed and uh, basically just took some rags, just old t-shirt. That's what I generally use, and uh, just kind of rubbed around, swirled around some kind of greens and dark colors into this. Actually, what I did first is I uh, I did a pre-varnish. I took some varnish, <clears throat> thinned it down with thinner, and uh, went over this whole thing to try and make the surface a little le uh, more impermeable, less absorbent, so I wouldn't have to uh, fight sinking issues so much. Um, yeah, masonite can be a, a lot of fun to paint on, but it's very absorbent. It can suck the oil right out of your paint. And along with the oil, it can suck the life out. So I have all kinds of exciting color over here. Um, I have no real like, plan. I actually... Uh, look at this big freaking mess right here. I just have white everywhere. I, I'm, I'm basically working with primaries almost exclusively with a couple convenience colors because it makes it a little uh, easier to... Uh, to get certain tonal ranges and hues. Um, like I have a, a, a cadmium light red here and, um, oh geez, what, uh, that's an ultramarine blue, I believe. Um, and it's a cer cerulean, I wanna say? Yeah, that's a cerulean blue. Um, Quinacridone magenta, right here, which is a primary in Lucas. Um, Hansa Yellow, Primary and Lucas, I believe, and um, I have some uh, some Rose in Windsor and Newton, 
titanium in Windsor and Newton. And that's it. Like, pretty limited palette. I made some green over here, but that was just using some of this yellow uh, Lucas with the um, Cerulean. So, like, just give me a base green. I'm not going to probably do too much with green right now. Um, a lot of my background tone that I laid in here was actually green and blue. Uh, I just wanted some kind of a darker mid-tone for these uh, warmer colors to uh, bounce off of. So, we're going to um, just see where this goes. I'm, I'm really just playing around. I'm just having a good time, having fun. Um, I'm going to bring my reference back up. I have my, can't see it, it's right off the camera. And uh, for this session, I'm not going to show the photo reference. Um, I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to handle that. I could zoom out the camera, of course, and show the photo reference at the same time. But uh, this isn't my photo, I'll be honest. And uh, I'm only using it in a very rough sense. I, psh, there's nothing about using this photo that would get me in trouble copyright-wise. I've changed it. <laughs> more than significantly enough for it to uh, to not look like I was just trying to copy the photo, and I'm too weird anyway. I mean, my compositions. I mean, this is a pretty uh, pretty standard um, proportioned uh, rule of thirds composition um, landscape photo. A gorgeous one at sunset, mind you, uh, but very symmetrical, very uh, very uh, on point, very very much. Uh, single uh, perspective from the camera lens view. But um, me, I, I took that whole thing and threw that shit out the window. Um, I can never leave perspective alone. For me, I always have to feel like the entire image is moving. Let's just make a, a mark. Ooh, that was beautiful. I love that color. That color was freaking phenomenal. Um, I didn't even mean for it to be. <laughs> it was just the first blue I made. But yeah. Um, so I'm looking at my photo reference over here, and I'm actually only, like I said, I'm using it very generally and um, only as kind of a, a muse for color um, and a little bit of composition. It, it, it has some pine trees in it, a bunch of really beautiful pink and purple flowers, uh, a big fog bank, which this is going to become. Uh, I have this purple kind of pinkish thing going down through here. A lot of this uh, right now is uh, just kind of uh, me sketching in. Um, so yeah, today's video is uh, pretty unfocused. Um, I really uh, sat around all day um, planning on doing a focus video and uh, didn't get anything done. Um, I've been pretty unmotivated today, to be honest, but I forced myself eventually to get off my ass and, uh, and do something with this. Um, I had, I had liked my rub in with the rag so much that I was afraid of messing that up, which is funny, um, because it was very much, um, a traditional way of me like laying in the first, first parts of that painting or any painting really. And, uh, you know, in a weird little way, I kind of screwed myself. I, uh. When you like something, it's hard to to want to go back and mess with it. And uh, I just kind of at some point said "f it" and uh, did what my my heart's desire uh, and and goal from the the, the get go actually was with this piece in particular, which was to to try and one st stroke. Uh, And all I mean is by that is I'm I'm just I don't generally work this way. Um, I'm just placing strokes down in in in, um, in infinity here, basically. Um, I'm building up the image, but I generally don't paint this way. I, ba I basically generally rough it out and block in my color zones and then refine them and then get all like press strokey with it. I don't usually just go into the ether here and start drawing the image very slowly in uh, one stroke at a time. This is a little new for me, but um, I'm doing it and for the heck of it, you know, because I, I, I haven't done 
this before. I figure, why the hell not? I'm, I'm, I'm really attempting as I get older to get more emotive and uh, purposeful uh, with my work. And I say that a lot. Um, but, uh, that was kind of pretty. but yeah, I'm always, I'm always looking to improve and, uh, and surprise myself. Sometimes I get in the doldrums. I've been a little bit in the doldrums lately with my work. Um, I felt like I've been in a little bit of a rut. I've been working on the same piece for months, you know, basically. And I, I, I venture out here and there and work a little bit on other stuff. Uh, more of my sculpture, which is right here. I could reach out and touch it. Can't wait to show you guys that stuff, but I really have to get to a certain place with it before um, I show that that side of my work. Because I'm starting a whole new venture with sculpture. That's uh, kind of different. So that'll that'll be coming soon enough. I guess you can equate this really to kind of almost like how Van Gogh painted, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, this is all in an attempt to, to get a lot faster. And, um, and more emotive and more expressive. Yeah, that, that, that blue is totally wrong for that area. So, I do have a reference in the background, and like I said, it is a mountain scene, and I am kind of representing, uh, reproducing the color somewhat um, the image itself the photograph I'm using as reference is very 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 vibrant it's unnaturally vibrant for for what it is um, it's, it's quite beautiful it's a really awesome reference um, and I would be using my own but I didn't I don't know I was just going through my inspiring photo directory and uh, you know hey some of the most famous paintings in history including the scream was basically pilfered from another artist f photography Edvard von Munch basically I think he took a picture he found in Time magazine of a Mayan mummy and uh he has a quote to, to some effect about this. I'm trying to remember what his quote is. But but when he saw the photograph, he has his famous quote about when he saw the famous photograph that he saw the embodiment of the human scream and he had to paint it. Something to that effect. But there's, there's actually a shocking amount of paintings that were done during the 20th century that are very famous that were basically artists just looking at a being inspired by professional photographers' work, not their own photography, mind you, or anything that they set up, but being inspired by a photographer's work and using it as a reference and then painting some crazy famous painting based on that. I'm not saying it's a famous painting. I have, or, uh, uh, that's not my point. Uh, photograph, I have no idea. It was just one I found uh, randomly searching for beautiful landscapes on on Google <clears throat> and this is going to be sufficiently different to the, to the point where even the photographer the uh, the original uh, photographer I'm sorry would uh, would be shocked to know that I used their photograph to to paint this painting based on their photograph because it looks so different so, so that's my my point is a little touchy it's a little bit of ego involved there and I have plenty of my own spectacular photographs. I take them constantly. I just decided to use this one because, damn, it's a really cool photograph. And uh, I'm just going to one-stroke this. I only have two brushes going. They're roughly similar. One's a little longer than the other. They're both pretty hammered. Um, as you can see, neither, the, neither of these things are pretty. They used to uh, be flat brushes. Now they're just big, fluffy... Uh, sp splayed out messes um, which I like they have a lot of character to them um, I'm very slowly just kind of going in here and picking out like I'm, I'm basically like kind of making notes with my colors um, it's 
suppose I'll have to uh, put some plastic wrap over this dude later. Ooh, that was nice. And these these colors are uh, a little wacky. Throw a little black into them. You know, it's a pet peeve of mine, but some people say never use black, but um, using gray purely to tone down colors. I mean, yeah, sure, I use complements and cross complements, uh, complementary colors constantly, but. Uh, Honestly, just using a little gray sometimes is the way to go. Don't listen to people who tell you to never use black. It's silliness. Black is very useful. I, I put it out constantly. Not always, but a good amount of time, even if I barely use it. Like I said, I, I mean, any any color I throw down right now, it's basically going to look pretty phenomenal against this muddy uh, kind of green color I have in the background. And I'm really just trying to build an interesting skyscape right now. There's a lot of stuff off camera you won't see, like my wash bin and all that stuff. But yeah, you'll hear it. I'm sitting here cleaning my brushes out and going for some new color. Just threw out some some new fresh color. I uh, kind of ran out of yellow and blue earlier, and I decided I I had originally. This is why this looks so messy. I I had originally laid out my colors last night up here, um, but now I've decided it's probably just better to go this direction with them, and that gives me a little bit more real estate. Um, it's a challenge. I think I'm going to try and make a kind of a nice orange color here. I'm actually using a little bit of the rose, the, the Windsor Newton rose with this yellow. I, I just think it makes a really gorgeous orange. Yeah. There's a lot of orange in this image. Tons and tons and tons of orange. Hmm. Should actually be a little bit more desaturated. Look at that. My other reference. Here we go. And I'm going to build layers up. I'm not going to just leave this all just one stroke. One layer deep. I'll probably refine this quite a bit as time goes on. But I really don't want this to take forever. I'm trying to get faster. And, and just really more think about what I'm doing while I do it. You can add a little variation here and there. If you see me throwing in some weirdness, it's because I'm trying to, uh, to make it exciting. For me. I like getting flowy with strokes. Every every paint stroke I throw down generally has like a, a bit of movement to it. The short and long. It's a stroke. It's not a 
a pixel or a dot like you might see in, say, pointillistic work like um, Seurat, George Seurat. bit more intensity over here. Yeah, this is a very um, obviously impressionistic uh, piece. As I've gotten older, I basically have just accepted the fact that I pretty much just love the impressionistic approach. And I'm not going to apologize for that. Yeah, it's been done to death, but it's effective. And if you can do it well enough and, and find your own voice with it, that's, that's, a, that's close to a miracle right there. Um, been countless impressionists throughout history and only a few notable ones um, from Monet to Renoir to like post-impressionists like Van Gogh and then there's plenty of American impressionists who came a little bit later who were amazing who were who were equally just like are you kidding me basically I'm just trying to vary my tones very subtly as I move here and make it more and more exciting. And I'm building up, um, you see I've varied my color quite a bit. I'm uh, choosing to mix it on the fly. I, uh, I kind of generally mixed out, pre-mixed out, some lighter tones really quick just because, you know, I knew that would save me a little bit of time. But I wasn't, like, particularly, um, uh, I don't know, anal, <laughs> I guess you could say, about, uh, you know, trying to pre-mix out all the colors I saw in the image so that I could just rock out, you know. Um, no, it's too many variations. I, I really want to see the variation as I go and try and nail it as I go in relation to um, what I'm building. And this is going to change tremendously. I mean, there's going to be a lot of variation, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot more changes coming. It's a challenge. It's a real challenge. I've never... Uh, I've never really tried to paint a painting this way before. I'm being honest, 100%. Like, I generally rough stuff out and, and whatever, and then just constantly refine it and refine it and refine it and refine it. This is more, uh, a, more of a direct approach. It's kind of, I guess the closest uh, thing I could say to me working this way is probably when I finger paint. Um, and I, I love my finger paintings, but um, I'm trying to get a little bit more um, staccato, <laughs> a little bit more, you know, something like, you know, it's a musical term, but a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, the George Seurat pointillist um, reference is kind of accurate, like, um, trying to get a little bit more detailed, smaller strokes in my work. You probably won't see me doing this, but I'm doing this a lot to my photo reference. I'm squinting a lot. It really helps you see shapes and color uh not color, uh, but values better. Helps you see 
yeah, values better. It does help me see color better, actually, quite a bit, too. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not quite um, finished with my composition by any means. I'm building it as I go, and I'm going really slow here. But I'm trying to be uh, a little bit more. This is a, a favorite word of the month, but um, deliberate. Instead of overworking everything to death, I'm trying to learn to lighten up. I don't have to perfect everything and trying to enjoy the process and slow my brain down a little bit. Not an easy thing to do. I'm very uh, nervous when I paint generally. You can see it, my strokes. This is uh, me trying to slow the nervousness down. And, uh, and wander through it. It's more like, I guess like when I'm, I'm doing my watercolor studies and in, in, when I'm live painting, out in, out in nature. I'm a little bit more observant, a little bit more considerate, more of a student of what's in front of me and less of a I don't know. Less of um, trying to force my um, my vision upon it. I'm trying to let nature do the work a little bit for me for a change. So I'm slowly coming in and building where um, certain things are going to be. There's going to be another kind of mountain here. I should have actually maybe. Nah, it's cool. It's cool. I was thinking maybe I should have brought it up more or something, but yeah, it's okay. See what happens. We'll see what happens. And as I go, I'll probably eventually... As I build these strokes up more and more, I'll probably eventually hone my light down more and, and refine these a little bit. And there'll be a little bit less variation in between. As you can see, like I'm doing right here, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going in and refining certain areas. Checking everything, making sure everything's working. I'm gonna have to keep my eye on my battery. Yeah, it's draining super quick. Um, all right, we're 30 minutes in. I'm gonna probably have to go grab my charger and plug it in here in the next few minutes. Few minutes. Like I said, it's a chill stream. I'm at the end of my weekend. Tomorrow's Monday. I basically have to go do my day job stuff tomorrow. But it's not until, I don't have to be there until 11 a.m. And right now it's 10.30 p.m. So I have, I have a bit. I have a little bit of time. Everything's cool. Let's keep moving. Um...
man, this paint is getting thick on me quick. I'm pretty, uh, I mean, I just put this out a few hours ago and it's already starting to dry. I mean, this is oil paint. You know, half, well, most of it's Lucas that I have out, and Lucas tends to dry a good bit faster than the Windsor and Newton. But it, I, even I'm, I'm like really surprised right now how fast this is drying. <sighs> Kind of trying to even these tones out a little bit. Funny enough, I've got this, this mountain turning into a sunset, but there's little remnants of this mountain way in the background. And then, like I said, it turns into a, a fog bank, which I'm still not really sure how I'm going to pull off with the impressionistic strokes. I don't know how that's going to work. But, um, yeah. We'll find out. There we go. That was nice. That was a nice tone change for that. And that's what this is. This is the fog bank rolling in. And it's going in between all these mountain peaks. This is going to be a slow burner. It's like, literally like watching paint dry. But ironically, working this way on this huge surface, I've only been at this a few hours and I've already covered a, a decent amount. Um, so, it's actually, it's going really well so far. Um, it's a matter of patience and teaching yourself patience. This is, this is hard for even me, someone who uh, considers himself reasonably patient to, uh, to work this slow. Normally I'd be, bleh, I'd be like doing all kinds of crazy shit. My hands would be moving around. That's generally how my, uh, my figure paintings go. And I thought that that would be fun. You know, I thought I would, that's what I was going to do. But actually, that was my whole intent or my plan was to do something like that. But I, I changed my mind. Um, there was a certain artist now. It's not really important who they are right now. Um, but it, I've just been, I, I'm always inspired by this person. And they're a living artist, they're, they're around. They're someone who I, uh, I feel constantly inspired by. And I think my work's quite different from theirs, but um, they have this more uh, direct approach to how they, they handle these... Uh, impressionistic paintings and, and I appreciate that and I'm just giving it a shot you know so far I'm, I'm really pretty pretty pleased I generally wouldn't get this thick right off the bat with a painting um, because I like to. Uh, I've said this a lot actually recently in my, in my videos, but kind of have a plan before you get all thick. Because once you get thick, it's a little hard to change it, but you know, what the hell? breaking my own rules right now and that's fun sometimes too. And I've been going in on um, certain edges and refining them with Q-tips actually. Um, I did that earlier over here. I was going in and sculpting out the edge of this mountain. Because it's actually, you know, my photo reference is quite jagged, but I I don't want to um, overly detail it, overly complicate the detail. Uh, <clears throat> at least not right at the beginning, I'm, I'm not going to. Still a long ways to go on this sucker. So. I just really want to mote it out. I really just want to 
to think it out, establish it, and refine it a little bit as I go. I'm pretty unfocused tonight. I'm tired. I've been up all freaking day. It's the end of my day, actually. I should be chilling and, and watching sci-fi shows and and smoking bowls and getting ready to go to bed, but I uh, decided to do this instead. <laughs> I don't know. I've been feeling pretty uh, cagey lately with my art. Sometimes, I mean, I'll I'll be a megalomaniac and love everything I, I fucking do. And other days, I'm just frustrated and hate everything I do. Welcome to being a creative person. It's, I think it's pretty much a, a universal of creative people that we pretty much throw ourselves through our, our own gauntlets of uh, self-torture. Good enough, not good enough. Godlike, I'm so good. And then the next day, oh, I'm fucking terrible. I, I'm so fucking horrible. I can't believe I don't even deserve to live. I don't even deserve to eat oil paint, much less use it to paint with. I'm so pathetic. I'm just saying, our personalities tend to, to go all over the place. Mine can do all of those things in the span of 30 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all a little bit of a head case. I get seriously freaking bored. I'm not trying new things all the time. <clears throat> Funny, I'm already going in. I'm just trying to tighten up the edges around certain things a little bit. Also, I'm trying to think about flow, like, like where this is going to end up. Like, because my my reference definitely has a, a certain flow to like the way the clouds are moving. And they're kind of. Uh, the kind of fanning this direction in my reference, so trying to kind of go with the flow on that one. And uh, on this side, they start to kind of take this direction, but a lot of this is made up, um, so my reference basically ends probably about right here. So this whole thing is an addition. Um, Probably a third. This is an addition. My reference is really just like this little piece right here in the center. The rest I'm just kind of adding to it. I tend to really enjoy um, warp perspectives. I say that a lot, but um, I. Uh, I enjoy perspectives that move. I think I'll add a little bit more add to there. I feel like they're flying, that they're always in flux. This thing's pretty nascent. I mean, it's very much at the beginning right now. 
Like I said, I probably only have like three hours in this whole thing. <sighs> All right, my battery is almost toast. My laptop is dying quicker than hell. I have a ton of things plugged into it right now, that's why. I really need to fix this. And we're not gonna be online much longer. So, forgive me while I'm off camera. I need to get another charger, it's just... I tend not to spend money if I were, you know, I don't need to. I mean, slowly I've been spending a lot of money just adding conveniences to my setup over here. Because uh, generally, I have all my computer stuff over on that side of the room so every time I move my laptop over to here I, I used to have to grab like everything and move it over here so I'm slowly replacing all my accessories and building all new accessories over here and then just having to move my laptop the only thing I haven't had to or the only thing I haven't replaced yet is my charger I need to get another charger which I will do soon enough yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Alrighty. Hopefully it won't screw anything up by moving devices around. Sometimes USB hubs can be a little touchy with the uh, C port. Because my other one's really touchy. If I even breathe on it wrong, it'll disconnect every device and all my hard drives will kick out and have to re reattach. Alright, let's see if we're still broadcasting. Yeah, we're at 42 minutes. I have no idea how long I'm going to go. No idea at all. Didn't really have much of a plan for this today. I just... Uh, I haven't recorded in a in a while. I get all gun ho to do this, and then I get all depressed. To be completely honest about about um, what I'm showing. It's not like I'm not proud of what I do. It's just uh, sometimes it doesn't come off in video the best. And this one won't right off the bat. I, I was looking at my preview and I could already tell I've got my um, Aver Media 513 zoomed in, like halfway, basically, digitally. And it's making this look pretty grainy. Um, next time, I'm just going to bring my camera mount a lot closer. That'll, that'll be better. It'll look a lot better. I will do that next time, like I said. This mountain, I'm, this reference that I'm using is pretty complicated. Uh, like there's a mountain in it, and it, it's it's crazy complicated. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm trying to mimic it. I'm not trying to reproduce it by any means. Not not at all. Because damn, if I, if I was, I would I'd be here for a month of Sundays trying to to just do the mountain part. It, it's crazy complicated. I'm just trying to catch the spirit of it. I'm also trying to be careful not to add too much color variation. Like I'm not trying to, I'm trying to keep these colors fairly warm on this left side to make this mount pop. I'm trying not to add like every color in the rainbow over here. It'll, it'll start to gray out. I've, I've talked about that before where 
I've screwed that up so many times where I'm trying to over overcomplicate a color scheme and it really just comes bite to bite you because if you try and add every color in existence you end up just making gray so I think it's blue, just trying to warm it up. There's a lot of um, a lot of purples and blues on this side of this painting. Or well, this reference anyway. It's ironic since the uh, light source is basically pretty pretty orangey. I'm not just trying to stroke. I, I'm doing like tappy movements and whatever works. All these little variations are so much fun. And only to the naked eye can you really see the uh, the real subtle little, little, little minute differences I'm, I'm giving, giving to each stroke in terms of its color relationship to the one next to it. Just want to make sure I'm charging now. I did plug it in. I just, yeah, it's, it's plugged in. Cool. Good deal. It's funny, this, uh, I was looking at the photo reference on my laptop screen versus my TV screen, and they look quite different. My TV screen is quite a bit more saturated than my laptop screen. <clears throat> Oh, there's all kinds of complicated things coming into this thing eventually. There's tons of pine trees and grass and, and flowers, and man, that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to uh, get get to it. Um, I have all these purples. Actually, it's going to be something in this tonal range. It's going to be something like this. I'm jumping the gun here, and I don't mean to be. I'm just, they're going to be a whole bunch of very, very, very vibrant color or flowers down here. Like, they're nuts. They're really, really, really bright. Pretty much neon. There we go. That was the color I was looking for. I'm just making a note. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I'm just kind of hopping around. I'm trying to build perspective here right now. And um, so, like, little things like this are just basically uh, 
little landmarks. Places I'm going to to get to and refine eventually. Man, these colors are so bright. Cool. Awesome. And they help sell the perspective. It's like if this was a Monet water lily painting, basically, that's drawing the spark in the foreground. All right. <clears throat> Got a cool brush and a warm brush going, basically. Um, Trying to throw a little bit of a kind of whoops. I just hate brush strokes that get boring. So I'm trying to make them have some flow. Oof, that's a mistake. I take my warm color brush and throw it into some blue. It's okay, it's pretty effective. Like it worked well, but now I have to clean this brush out. Just working down towards this horizon line here and trying to carve out the next line of mountains here. Got a little gray in there, that was fine. Didn't need to, but it's okay. Tracing out this mountain line. I already have the uh, the mountains kind of like drawn in there. I think I'll turn those into some pretty interesting looking like little clouds maybe coming up. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that isn't in the actual image, the original image. That's the whole point. Reference is just uh, kind of a guide, rough guide. That's the way I look at it. I use reference, which I really don't do too often, but... I've talked about the fact that I would like to incorporate reference into my work a lot more now. It just makes my life a lot easier, especially if I'm working online. It's one thing, <clears throat> you know, if I'm working on my head off camera, then I can spend all the time in the world, like, being frustrated by something that doesn't look right until I figure it out through my own means, but... A little easier to have a guide when you're performing so I don't think it's slowing slow down too much. Be boring.
There we go. Pretty quickly, we got... Cool. I have my Instagram on the left hand I've had their flag. I don't even know how long I've even hit it. This paint's probably gonna, I mean, it'll take probably weeks to dry completely to the touch, but it's already starting to um, get sticky on me in certain areas. So, my point is, is that these highly impasto strokes, these big thick ones, I'm going to try and refine and work those and make sure that they belong where they do before they get super hard um, over the next week or two. So. so I don't have to carve into it too much if I decide to make any major changes. Carve into it meaning using my uh, scalpel here to, to refine dried press strokes that may conflict with, say if I make a compositional change, which I very well could, I, I do that pretty much always. And I probably will with this one, I'm sure. Let's see what happens. That's why I generally don't go thick with my brush strokes right off the bat, but I'm also just trying to be a lot more playful. Also, it's a pretty big painting. Um, geez, I have no idea how big it is. It's probably four feet wide, I'm sure. So, it's pretty standard because it's a four by eight sheet. We all came from a four by eight sheet of a uh, masonite. So, yeah, it's 48 inches wide, so four feet, and it's 34, so nearly three feet tall. Nearly three by four. It's good size. It's decent. It'll jump off a gallery wall, which is where this is going. So, oh yeah, I haven't talked about that. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty tough as a performer, an artist, or anybody who does public events to to make a living right now. Tell me about it. It's a good thing I have a regular day job. Um, But, yeah, I, uh, I had a gallery um, call me up last week or or get a hold of me last week and uh, invite me into a show. They allowed me. It's a new gallery. And while I'm not, like, the biggest fan of doing actual gallery shows, I'd rather do a coffee shop over an art gallery. But you sell more. <laughs> but it's not the point. The point is, is to... To have an angle and to produce work and to have this work um, build up my inventory and uh, and to be good work, you know, I want it to be very good work. But I uh, I set my month for at random. I was going to pick August for the heck of it. I figured a few months out would be safe to get a few paintings done, but ended up that month was used. So I took September, which is perfect. It's perfect. 
and I've only seen a couple. This this gallery is in construction right now. I've only seen a couple couple of construction photos, but I'm going to have to go in there here in the next month or so and take a bunch of photographs. It's something I like to do when I plan out a show. If I'm doing a coffee shop or a gallery or something, I'll go in and film the whole place. I'll take pictures, video, and everything. I'll, t I'll, I'll take pictures of every wall, and that way I can get kind of a, an idea of what I'm going to put where um, with my pieces so I can plan it out. It's kind of a smart idea, I would like to think. And this piece over the next week will go through a huge amount of refinement. We're just we're throwing in the basics here. We're we're getting these initial brush strokes down, and then, um, like I said, before it gets too dried up, I'm going to come in here and probably refine on it quite a bit. And as I go, the strokes will get smaller, and some will get bigger, and and uh, I tend to. As an artist uh, who I adore, like to say, like like to lick things to death. He called it licking, licking with a brush. Like this is a big tongue, and you're just you're constantly just tweaking, 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 tweaking until it's perfect. I'm one of those. I do that to no end. And there's a bunch of light effects in this painting that I'm only basically establishing. There's um, some glows like. There's some glows coming through this mountain that I will will build up through blazes and uh, other brushstrokes as as we go. You'll see it happen. I I've, I have it pretty roughed in pretty well. Like it's it's not bad. Take a little inspiration there. All right. I don't know. I just picked up the uh, the cool color brush. I don't know why. It's interesting. This 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 reference I'm using the background mountain actually has some really dark colors in in it, and it's pretty far in the background. It it's always a challenge. You know, how do you how do you make it look distant and far back? And get those dark colors in there without it intruding on the foreground. It's a tough one. It's not easy. Plus, for a lot of what I'm trying to do here, this brush is actually a little bit too big. It was good for establishing. I mean, look, this is a big painting. I'm using a tiny, tiny little, God, what is this, a half inch or maybe? Not even a half inch. -er. Probably just short of a half inch. Probably half inch. I don't know. This is a Royal Anical R43F. Probably don't even make this brush anywhere. Looks like it's a number four. And it's hard to tell. A lot of the numbers are pretty whacked. Uh, I'm being pretty uh, subdued and quiet today. I've been up since we this morning. Like I said, I'd normally be winding down right now. But, uh, but I really need to kick myself in the butt and, and make a make a video and do something a little different. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is a lot different. This this is fun. I'm, ha I'm having a great time. I'm painting in a way I've never painted before. So. I think it's going to work out great. I already am really happy with it. That's why I decided to film. 
I was actually kind of like su surprised at how, how much I liked it right off the bat and how much progress I have made in such a short amount of time. Um, it's a good lesson. Pain outside your safety zone sometimes, your comfort zone. It's uh, incredible, incredibly important, I think, to work outside of uh, to work outside of what you know. Because until you do something you don't know, you won't know it, will you? Right. You have to get to know it. That's the, that's the thing. It's like getting to know anything or anyone. I'm just kind of randomly just run this lighter, warmer tone in underneath this other mountain. Or this hill, whatever, in the background here. To kind of create like a little depth. You have to forgive me, and some of this is just sketching. I'm, I'm really just uh, trying to create boundaries. Eventually I'll start throwing in some silhouettes of some background pine trees and things of that nature. Probably not going to go really long on the stream. I was planning on doing like an all-day stream today, but I'm pretty off my rocker. I'm pretty out of the game. A little out of practice. Checking everything. Still going. We're in an hour. In seven minutes. Cool. Everything seems groovy. Should probably tug the tuck this and super loose cord into my pocket or something. I've got so many wires coming off of me. I look like a Terry Gilliam set. All I mean by that is as if you've ever seen like the movie Brazil, who which I adore. Funny story about that movie. My dad was a freak. I mean he had kids. He I guess he figured it couldn't do any harm, right? So when I was like eight years old and my brother was like six, he, uh, he took my brother and I to go see the movie Brazil when it first released in 1984 in the United States. It actually, the movie had come out in Europe like in 81, I think it was. But, um, oh shit, I went into a blue with my, basically my, um, pretty dumb, with my, uh, Warm brush, but it's okay. I don't care. I'll just use it for a minute. So this is, like I said, this is going to be a fog bank eventually. It's getting built. Doesn't look too bad. Just throwing in some light and warm. Throwing some shadows. And it's quite all right. Like as I refine this painting, my strokes get a little lighter and more refined. Things will start to read a whole lot better. Like I'm really just taking the sledgehammer to it and building the foundation. 
but I also am trying to discover processes that um, allow me to finish paintings about a hundred times faster than I usually do. I have my own, you know, way of getting things done, and sometimes that just takes way too long. I only have four months to do a show, and I want it to mostly be new work. So this will be a mid-sized piece. I'll probably do like three or four more of these, maybe a couple bigger ones, and a whole bunch of smaller stuff. And um, I want to get all that done in four months, so we'll see how that works out. So I'm trying to, especially this painting, it'll probably take that long to even dry. So um, honestly, it'll probably take a year to dry before I even want to varnish this fucker. But um So there are artists who can do a painting in a day, a painting in a couple hours, a painting in a week, whatever, and and that can vary. Me, I, I take way too fucking long to do anything. So for me, it can take months or years to paint anything. So I, I mean, or yeah, I can do something in a couple hours if I don't care um, that much. I've done plenty of stuff like that. Some of my best stuff that sent me in certain directions in my career have been paintings like that. But, that aside, I, uh, I'm barely trying to get more efficient and quick. Said it's a million times more deliberate. <sighs> Work more efficiently. Less bam 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 and hundred layers more just you know. The one stroke you need to make the thing look the way it needs to look. There's a lot of great artists who are good at that. I'm not one of them. But I'm, I'm working on it. Doesn't mean I can't struck quickly when I know where I'm going. So basically what I'm trying to do is make fog that's wrapping around. Little peaks are popping up out of it, like, like they're little islands on a sea. There we go. It's actually starting to look kind of cool. Starting to look foggy. Definitely. God, I can't believe how how thick this paint's getting on me already. This is like shocking. Maybe it's just this Lucas paint. That could be a really good thing. I mean, you know, I, I'm not complaining. And it's probably also partially because um, I'm working on masonite, which is pretty absorbent. Even after I uh, 
I clear coated this to, to reduce that a little bit. Because, yeah, I definitely did. Now, this whole base of this mountain is definitely going to get a lot darker. I can kind of rough that out a little bit. But I, I, I want it to be a little bit more thoughtful about what I'm doing over here. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. I, this, this mountain is so incredibly complicated. It, it, it's hurting my brain, big time, like staring at it. <laughs> staring at this reference is hurting me. Um, and I'm not going to try to, uh, like, replicate it realistically. Um, I'm just trying to capture the soul of it. Honestly, these brushes are way too big for what I'm trying to do. I'll probably, I mean, for in this area, it's it's all these little detailed things. But I'll probably just rough it out for now and then come back and do that later. You know. It's fine. You know, fog bank's starting to actually look like something now. That's cool. And I'm starting to get a little bit of a shadow over here. That's nice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's tricky. This will take me a while to get it right. No, I'll probably never get it right. <laughs> It'll be right er. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It'll be right or right er. Writer esque. Writer ish. Writer -ish. It's going to be something. Tricky. There's a lot of um, a lot of atmospherics in this, which is messing with the perspective a little bit. Because when you have fog rolling in, you know, it's making some of these trees that are kind of, I don't know. It, it's tricky. This is very tricky. Everything in life is tricky. It's okay. I'm thinking about adding my different planes. They're gonna be in here. There's gonna be a lot of perspective to this as well. <clears throat>
So this could be another hill coming in here. Eventually. It's in the background, but I think I'll do another one over here. I'm making this one up because it's not in the picture. I can't even see this. I mean, this isn't this isn't part of the the reference at all. I'm just throwing in some random colors in this background over here. I'll, I'll mess with that more <laughs> when we get there. Just try and make it fun. Give it some variation. Got blue over here. Might as well have to make over here. This going into a shadow. Might as well make this lighter. I'm thinking about it. You know, I'm thinking about how this is going to work. There's going to be a bloom coming into this hill. Doesn't even look like a hill right now. It looks like a mess, but it will look like a hill eventually. Trust me. There we go. This old brownie town. Being pretty quiet tonight. Usually I'm just like an endless freaking fountain of babbling, but yeah, I guess I'm trying to focus more than usual. I'll probably wrap it up fairly soon. I, I just wanted to uh, get a little camera time. It's starting to look like something, though. Gets me excited. You know, it gives me something to crank on all week. Because by the end of the week, I'll have this whole thing just probably covered and in these strokes and then after that we'll let it dry and then just keep layering the sucker up until it it looks phenomenal I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with it though I'm starting to get there all right Yeah, I like those lighter yellows on the left side. Those are nice.
he can paint thick and heavy and and stroke can still get a lot of death in the atmosphere. I'm already starting to establish some here and there. It'll be a lot of fun. Actually, I'm really enjoying this. A huge amount of a huge amount to go. Huge. But um what are we up to like four four something hours. I mean it's like an hour and something recording, but like I'm probably like four something hours and depending on this guy and I'm already really, really happy with it. <coughs> Well, let's start establishing some more in this this core middle ground over here. Why not? Want some more real red in here? I can see that from my reference. I've got all these purples in here. There we go. That that was a really beautiful addition. Nice. I tend to vary my strokes a lot and uh, come back in here and then change my shades because let's get a few down. And I mean, when I change it, I, I'm only very subtly shifting it. I'm not trying to make it radically different because if I did that, this said, you would just end up making a bunch of um, gray. I'm just trying to make the warm colors like <clears throat> this purple's warm compared to this green, sure, but purple's technically kind of a it's kind of a magneta pastel magneta, but it uh is technically on the cool side. Like if you were thinking about it from an oil painter perspective, it's kind of a cool color. But it's a matter of context. I mean, it's warmer than the green. It's going over, which is kind of why I put the green down in the first place. <clears throat> Just to make that jump, that warmer color jump off of it. It's good to lay down a mid-tone, you know. I think, I don't know. Seems to be work, working for me. And making some strokes to establish a little bit of flow. Cause I'm I'm really thinking about like how everything's going to run off the edge. Everything's flowing over here. I kind of lost my way on this yellow. I really wanted to make some like kind of pop corny kind of like clouds with it. I think I'll do that right now. I'll just establish it. Because there's kind of a hint of that in this reference. Poofy popcorn looking little clouds. You probably know what I'm talking about, and if not, then open your eyes and look up more. I don't know what to tell you. It's my universe, and I'm saying these things are going to go right here. Alright, I think that you want to be. 
I want to have kind of a warmer, pinkier tone, peachier tone under them. Oh yeah. I can tell you, it's a lot of fun. I'm actually really enjoying this more and more. If I'm quiet, it's partially, well, not only just because I'm tired and I've been up all day, but, but because I've never really painted exactly like this before, I, uh, I'm thinking. Busting the noggin. funny but the, the more color you have on the surface to compare other color to the more you see your mistakes <clears throat> in your oversights because color is a matter of context I'll say it every time an ugly color can look beautiful in the right context the color isn't ugly, it's a matter of the context that you're viewing it. It could be the muddiest, ugliest green in the universe, but if it's the only color in a gray sky, then it might be kind of pretty. It's just a matter of context. So, like in this mountain, I have to start building planes. Like, that's what I'm slowly, slowly doing here. I had the warm side where it's catching light, and now I'm trying to build the shadowy sides of the mountain. That's going to take a while. It's hyper complicated. My references, anyway. So, it's one of the most freaking complicated mountains I've ever seen in my life, honestly. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's hurting my brain. I, I think I've said this like 10 times, but it's hurting my brain even just looking at this. But it's okay. Yeah, I'm doing a little recreating in the background. I try not to do that too much anymore. I've been a pretty good boy lately. But sometimes you uh, need a little kick in the butt from the side, sideways, you know, to get motivation. And I've tried this. Multiple times, it usually backfires. But today, I just got all set up and ready to rock and got the thing filming before I screwed around. So that was helpful. I'm starting to get a little bit of a blast of glow through this, I like. Because there's a bloom that's coming through this hill. In fact, I'm going to try and reduce the uh, complexity of all these strokes a little bit. Well, it's still wet. There we go. It's a little better.
kissing, kissing, kiss it. It's gone super light with my brush strokes. Let's try to do a little blending there. Just a touch. Of course, I have like a ton of uh, Q-tips out. I can sit here and uh, find edges all day long with these. It's a great for pushing around paint, for shading, for removing paint, for a number of things. Yeah, I mean, they take paint off just as well as they put it on. And relocate in it. It's easy to draw up some tree trunks, which is kind of preliminary. I'm just, I was just doing that random for fun. Um, it's dumb. I, I shouldn't have put those there because I have a lot more refinement in this background to go before I even get to that point. Let's see if we're still going. and a half. Okie dokie. Let's keep going. Go for a little bit longer. Not that much longer. It's almost midnight here. West Coast the US A. But tomorrow I'm gonna do a lot more. Huge more. Huge amount more tomorrow. Probably at least as much as I've done today. By the end of the week, I'll hopefully have a good, like, rough approximation of this thing done. And then it'll just be a matter of coming along and chipping at it. <clears throat> and, uh, really, I just need to uh, start establishing a bunch of paintings and getting them going. Then I can spend here until the September... Or find them for you guys. And I, you know, I've, I've messed around with the idea of like maybe putting a nude in here or something. We'll see what happens. I doubt I will on this one. But maybe on the next one I'll do a nude in it. I like doing nudes. They're really fun um, for me. I'm a guy. What, you know, it could be a nude dude too. I mean, it's fine. I'm not into dudes, but I, uh, I think, uh, you know, the male body is beautiful. Yeah. That 5, 10% of me that's gay. I'm kidding. But that's an artist. Uh, that sees it as structurally gorgeous. I really, really do uh, find the male body beautiful as well. I'm not attracted to it, but I find it beautiful. And I find the female body beautiful as well, obviously. But uh, I don't have much use for it. All right. Seems a bit confusing. But as you get to know me, you'll find out what that means. Basically, I really just don't hang out with people in general very much. I go on my job. I'm very extroverted, very nice, very on the surface with everybody. But when I'm at home, where I don't need to be around human beings, I pretty much go right into introversion mode. That's why it's hard sometimes, like me to make videos you know it's like to me making a video is like trying to go out in public 
intentionally to have a conversation. It's pretty tough. This is why I'm constantly seeking new and fun ways to paint. So I convince myself to be out here in front of you guys, making a fool of myself. I need more yellow. I definitely need more yellow. Yeah. I, want, I have all these themes of my paintings that I've done, and I'm coming up with new themes. I mean, you know, until you're dead, you keep coming up with new things. But themes, like music themes, alcohol themes, whatever. Like themes. Still lives, themes, ideas. But my point in bringing that up is I have, I'm, I'm trying to think of what I want to do for this show and other shows going forward, honestly. I will always do my introspective dark work. I will always have a couple of those pieces. Those are my, my babies. But this is, this is my venting. They don't generally sell those paintings. They don't even sell well anyway. People love them. Other artists adore them, but they can't afford them. So, I don't generally sell those. I sell these. These are what sell. The ones that are friendly and happy and full of life and color. And, and I don't, I, it doesn't surprise me or anything. I mean, are you kidding me? Why do you think I do it? I fucking love it as much as anybody who buys one of these things. I think I'm trying to be kitsch. No, not really. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to be kitsch, sure. Yeah, as a strategy, as an artist, yeah, it's a good survival tactic. But I'm trying to paint stuff that I want to see, that I want to look at, which is every bit as valid as anything that anybody else wants to look at. Because if other people aren't interested in looking at it, then I guess I can't make a living, huh? I usually pad my income pretty well with my art, so I have a long history of knowing what people are going to want to look at. But there's a lot of dark paintings I've never sold, and those I paint for, my, for myself. <clears throat> I use these painter wipes all the time. These are the go-off ones. There's all kinds of these. There's been dozens of different ones over the years that have come and gone. But these are the Goo Gone painter wipes. You can find these at Lowe's or wherever. Or I'm online. But there's uh, there's other brands. Uh, the art sites like Dick Blake and Cheap Joe's and Jerry's and all, and all those sites, they all have their own. But they're, they're handy to have around. Um, I don't have a sink in here. I'm in my bedroom. And I finger paint, you know, a fair amount. Although... Um, I, I'm actually enjoying just doing this brush thing lately. Um, I thought about getting all finger painting with this and being really emotive and whatnot, but honestly, I think it's, it's going really, 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 really well. Just being considerate and thoughtful and, and thinking it out and doing, uh, doing the brush thing. Um. It's looking pretty awesome. I'm pretty damn happy with it. Shit, we got one third of a fucking painting, like, you know, at least covered. You know? And, like, 24 hours in a day. Probably done this in four hours. It's not too bad. Maybe six hours. I did have uh, a couple hours last night of roughing in. This is... It's still wet. It's green. Um, that's blue. Wiped right off. Yeah. I laid this in last night on the rain, raw mason. And I did have a little bit of a ghosty image on here. Like I said, I had started a painting on here. And it was kind of cool. I actually kind of liked it, but I just destroyed it. 
took a little bit of balls to do it, a little bit of bravery, but I bucked up and did it. <laughs> you know, that's always a hard threshold to walk over. You know, liking something, but deciding to say F it and wreck it to make something you think might be better eventually. And so far, I think it's been worth it. Even my little fog bank here is starting to look pretty good. Um, this is really, really, really rough. I understand people aren't going to read this really well. And this is going to be a little consolidated um, by the time I'm done, for sure. You won't be seeing every single little like high and low of this. I'm going to definitely come in here and uh, equalize it a little bit. <clears throat> Let's go for like 15, 20 more minutes and I think I'm going to be okay for the night. I just want to uh, get a little on-screen time of me starting this sucker. I should have been filming it the whole time, but, you know, hey. It's all for posterity, right? <clears throat> I guess I'll work up. Um, working down might be a little bit awkward right now. I have a lot of darks to establish. And I don't think that that's going to help sell this to you guys right now. Because um, I have to figure out how I'm going to do that anyway. I, I have little like notes. I put little, little, little like green thingies in here to build uh, perspective. And uh, to establish that green. I mean, there is green in it anyway. I wiped green in as a mid-tone. And uh, blue. I thought those colors would be good. Those uh, kind of darker, muddier, earthier, uh, cooler colors would be good. Because uh, uh, to build a, a background on... Uh, because I was going to be, or I knew I was going to be throwing a lot of vibrant, like, bright color into it. And it, it was a wise decision. It really worked out really well. Usually it's not a bad idea to go inverse of the, uh, the color scheme of the image. Like, if you're doing a warmer, brighter color, uh, colored painting, which most of mine are anyway... Then going for a darker, muddier ground isn't a bad idea. It can be can be handy. It makes everything you do look like <laughs> look like you're a fucking genius because <laughs> you throw a light into a dark room, so it looks amazing no matter what you do, right? It's just a good strategy. Now making all that light and dark hold hands and look good in the end, that's well, that's just years of practice and uh, know-how. I can't help you out with that one. Um, and this is really, 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 really rough. <laughs> Still. Seriously rough. It's cool, though. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. All right. So let's go in here. We're going to... There we go. going to build some more light and... Next time, I mean, there's a couple other, I've been going around on Google looking for landscape photos or any other color, scheme, color schemes, photos, landscape photos. I think I want to just do landscapes for a while. I think I want to take a break and give my brain a rest. And Yeah, I'm going to be doing some emotive works for my, my show for sure. I'll have a few, probably two or three really dark new pieces, you know, um, in my show. 
upcoming show. But for the most part, I think I'm going to focus on um, more expressive emotive uh, landscapes and things of that nature, which is really near and dear to my heart anyway. It's like most of the time, if I want to look at something, it's what I want to look at anyway. I don't want to have to brack my brain thinking about shit too much. I mean, who does, right? Man, I'm getting some pain on my backdrop here. I can always change these out eventually, but I didn't even realize I was getting a bunch of white and stuff on the back. It's okay. Who cares? It gives a character. At this point, it would be almost impossible to fix that. So, oh well. I guess we're going to live with it. It was inevitable anyway. I mean, you should see my floor in here. It's freaking horrendous. And, yeah, I need to uh, add... This is where this block comes in. You know, I'm, I'm, do, I'm messing around this background, but... Just like even if I go for this dark blue, it's it's way too saturated. Either of them, they're way too saturated. You have to throw some freaking dirt in the sauce. There we go. It's a little better. You want your vibrant colors to look vibrant. You have to have something to make them uh, look vibrant against. You have to uh, throw some dirt in the sauce. You have to get some dark in here. gray. Keep adding to it. <clears throat> and I'll say it a million times, but I'm doing the Monet thing, holding my corners. I've always been that way anyway, instinctively. Before I even heard Monet say it, I, I always did it anyway. There's a lot of things that I found later as uh, precepts or concepts that I found myself naturally. It's not like I'm a fucking genius. Well, maybe I am. Aren't we all? But I discovered that on my own. I, I didn't need to be told to hold my corners or to vignette my scenes or anything like that. I have eyes. I, I, I appreciate that that in other people's work. So, you know, it's something that I've always just kind of done. I have to admit, I fucked this. It doesn't matter now. I knew it wouldn't anyway, but like I fucked this corner up last night, or I would have filmed yesterday. It took me like three, four hours to, and I ran out of juice by then. But it took me like three, four hours to fix this. Like, I don't know what happened. I think I hit it with my head or something. But I was setting up to film yesterday when I was doing the rough end for this, and I, it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway as a video. But because uh, I. I partook in some of my demon sauce, and that kind of fucked me up, and kind of screwed my whole, like, flow up and my day up. But, uh, I, uh... <laughs> so much fun. Actually, I'm really, 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 really enjoying this. Because, like, basically I do this anyway. Like, it's just that I usually, like, use rags and fingers and, and brushes to, like, rough out a big cloudy version of my composition and, and shift that around and then single stroke it to death. That's what I generally do. But this... But then that's also because I paint generally mostly for my head. You know, in this case, I'm working from a photo reference, but only very, very roughly, as I've said a hundred times, if, if you saw my photo reference, which maybe I'll show it eventually, you know, um, for this piece. Um, 
you'll see that it yeah I'm 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 going off the deep end. I'm I'm definitely doing my own thing. Um but it is nice to have something to hold you down to the ground. That's why I'm thinking about doing photo references more in my work. I've never been one for photo reference in my work at all. I've always felt it was a cheat, but now I'm just seeing it as kind of a liberating factor. You know, um It helps keep me in check. Because my own instincts might have me going and doing things that, yeah, I, I shouldn't be allowed to get away with. But this is looking phenomenal. I'm really, really, really happy with it. There's a lot of fill in to do. Like I said, I'm very, I'm being very staccato and being very, I'm just throwing it around and making notes and I'm kind of going back and filling it in. So, like this will be filled in more, it'll be smoother, this will be a little bit smoother, this will be a little bit smoother. A little bit, you know. I'll probably, uh, you know, focus more generally in this area. I might, like, limit it uh, for a while to this area to refine it while it's still wet and workable. Instead of, like, trying to bounce around and finish the whole image and rough out the entire image. I'll probably spend the next day or two like just fucking around in this area and then slowly spreading it out because the, the nice thing about it right now is that these brush strokes are still generally pretty soft I can still sculpt on them <clears throat> which is what I'm doing right now I could add and subtract pretty easily, refine it a little bit, and then maybe I'll uh, I'll spread it out.
Yeah, I'm not very talkative this time. <clears throat> very quiet. I'll have your minutes, right? It's like I could have chosen not to make a video if I, if I almost didn't. Just like all those other times that I didn't. But I did this time. Take or leave it. Yeah, it's looking pretty fucking hot. The more I work on this, the better it's getting. That's super good. More black in this. I'm building in plans as they come forward. Obviously. Yeah, it's looking great. Like, I'm starting to establish my little bit of light effects. Like, I, I, this is another hill, but the sun's over here somewhere, and it's, like, blowing out this. And it, I can, I'm can, i getting a little bit of that there. I'm going to blow it out a little bit here. Um, this could be 100% <laughs> more refined over here. I mean, I'm just kind of throwing some basic colors into this mountain to establish this as a mountain. Trust me, it's going to be completely different by the time I'm done with it. Um, it's going to have a lot more consideration in the shapes and the snow and the whatever. Everything else that's going on this mountain is going to have a lot more thought and time put behind it. I'm just trying to sketch out the basic parameters and, and get going here. Yeah. So this little purpley tone. A lot of black to it, a lot of gray. This side's more blue. I think I'll leave it that way. It's a little too dark, not even a little bit, it's way too dark. I got that way too dark. I didn't mean to do it.
Wow, that's sad. One of those moments. <laughs> yeah. Sucker loosened up on me. Oh, it slid off the. Uh, this one. Slid off the piece of wood I have in there as a spacer. Yeah, once it did loosen up on me a bit. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's check ourselves. Make sure everything's still hunky dory. We're at 212. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to bring up my browser. I'm going to check my. Well, I'm live. You can see my video. Nice. Well, I guess I fixed that. That's cool. I fixed uh, my problem. I, uh, I recently discovered I was having a problem seeing my live streams, and it was because I had OBS set to record at 60 frames per second with my my camera, but I don't think my laptop can handle it. Much less the fact that I can't establish or I can't install the drivers and everything for my new um, web camera it, because it doesn't recognize my port as a USB C. Or, uh, three, which is dumb because it is a USB three. It's a common complaint of this camera, actually. It, uh, when I see complaints about the uh, Avermedia Mega Camera, <laughs> look at that. Everybody's talking about this thing. It's fucking awesome. It's a great camera. It's just it does have its issues, um, and for me, it has major issues. But I'll I'll resolve them when I build a new computer and it does recognize a USB three port. Um, with my new computer, and I'll just use it for like my palette or a zoom in view or something like that. At that point, it'll be a two hundred fifty dollar um, zoom in camera. Um, right now, it's doing a great job. It's just that uh, I am in a way zoomed in mode, so it looks grainy as fuck uh, in this video. I'm sure. So. Next time, I'll just make the camera a lot closer forward instead of digitally zooming it. So I apologize for that. Because you can't see the striations of my strokes or anything else. All you're seeing is basic color. But I'll fix that.
Holy shit, in a few hours we've done a lot. This is going to take like probably 20 times as much time to actually finish, but it's, uh, it's being established beautifully. I'm pretty happy with it. So there'll be some pretty vibrant greens and a lot of darks. Like there's some pretty dark colors in this foreground. Like um, there will be anyway, eventually. Very dark. It'll help give it contrast. There we are. I'm doing that a little bit right now just to, on purpose. I'm doing this on purpose to, cause I, I think I'm gonna finish soon my stream, so I have to get up pretty early well, semi-early I have to get up at like 9am to be at work at 11 so <clears throat> and uh, to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed so. Yeah, it's looking pretty hot. I'm liking it. It's looking pretty fucking awesome. Usually I'm pretty animated and very talkative the entire time. It's hard to make me shut up, but today I'm very quiet. Actually, I'm this way a lot of the time. <clears throat> yeah, let's make this kind of warm. Actually, I want to nuke this. I want to make it look boring, like, because I've got this really interesting sunset going on. I don't want to make the end look like it's going to be promised to be fucking annoying, like, boring, like, disappointing. Interesting color right there. There we go. I'll do a lot more of that tomorrow. Establishing this warmer color. Yeah, it's part of a, it's a little planning to go, because I don't know what I'm going to do with the hills yet. 
hills and mountains, whatever. I'm not sure. So, actually, I don't know where my color should be over here, where it's facing right. Yeah, I'm trying to establish the base, which I just did quite a bit, like, at least the idea of it. Even though it's not even close to it, right? Hmm. <laughs> Like looking at my reference, looking at the colors of my palette, I'm like, really? I can, I can get that fucking crazy color in there, huh? Okay. All right. Well, those colors seem to want to be right here. It's nuts, but yeah. why not? That'll be fun to fuck with tomorrow. All right. That's interesting. <laughs> Don't want the party to get boring. All right. Let's go. Speaking of which, throw some lighter colors in this. Make it look like it's in the background. I think we've established a pretty decent, like, uh, foundation beginning to this painting. It's not bad. I'm pretty freaking happy with it. Like, I mean, uh, I don't know. I have to torture with it, uh, torture myself with it for several hours. But, you know, I like it a lot more than I hate it. So. What can I say? And, you know, in this foreground, we're going to get real dark. Um, so, you know, here, I'm just mixing my Magneto with my super dark blue. And we'll establish that right off the bat. Like, 
Yeah. Just to give it like some depth. Because it's not like a, any secret that this. I mean, there's going to be a lot of really, really vibrant greens and things of that nature in this. But, you know, right at the bat, it, it definitely needs to make a statement. Alrighty, you know what? I'm leaning towards calling this a night. It's been wonderful. It's been a lot of fun. And we will be right back at it pretty soon. So, let's call it a wrap. I have some other uh, things to do this evening before I go to sleep, and uh, I think it'll be fun to uh, start doing those things. So, thank you all. Um, like, sub, and follow, share if you even like. Um, yeah, it's a pretty off kilter video for me, but uh, it might be the beginning of something beautiful. You never know. And in fact, I think it is something quite beautiful. The beginning of something quite beautiful. I'm pretty freaking overjoyed with it, to be honest. I already almost like it more than my reference photo. And my reference photo is insane. Like, as photos of nature go, it's unbelievably beautiful. I wish I could show it to you, but I really don't want to. Because then you'll think I just ripped it off. But it's quite, 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 quite different. I mean... Yeah, very, very different. Um, but I want to incorporate some of the um, salty of the original photo in it before I show it to you guys. So I'll probably show it to you at the end. Um, but it is what it is. And if you made it this far, uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, um, I do this out of passion. And uh, self-torture. So... You all have a good evening and day or morning or whatever it may be. And uh, thank you very much. This is Sam Foote signing out. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Make it a, a beautiful day. That's what I just did. Make a beautiful day. You do it by action. You do it by choice. So, let us um, call it a... Um, Let's see. Let's look at everything. Oh, yeah, everything's charged. I've jumped through so many hoops to make sure everything works. It's like I have my receiver, Comica, plugged in to my laptop. I have, I bought a 10,000, well, I'll show you guys, 10,000 milliamp. Got plugged into my Comica, my Comica, because the battery on this thing, I don't know, Chinese made, it like, it was great at first, but, yeah, it barely lasts an hour, so I need to keep it plugged into a, something else. So, I just got this. This is the first time I'm using it. It's full charged. We should be good. So, yeah. I think I solved all my little issues. All I need now is another charger for my laptop. That'll be my last convenience item. 
and then uh, eventually I'll just get a, a, a DSLR. I can afford it right now. It's not a big deal. I could buy it in, like fucking tomorrow, and it would be like barely even scratch my fucking bank. But we're gonna keep rocking the Aver Media for a little bit, and then we're gonna turn it into maybe our uh, palette cam or something. Well, because we'll have two cameras on, maybe three eventually. I don't know. Um, but for now it's doing its service and uh, we'll keep rocking it for a couple months. And then uh, as I save up money, I'll, uh, I'll brave getting a DSLR, maybe a Canon M50, maybe an M2. I'd rather have an M2. I'd rather take the next step and spend a thousand on a better camera, but yeah, we'll see what's up. And, uh, you know, then I'll be able to zoom in and have better uh, focus and detail. Um, I like this thing because it has infinite focus, whereas a uh, DSLR wouldn't. It's going to want to focus all the time. That might be annoying. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll get there when we get there. Anyway, um, it's been fun. Let's uh, do this again and uh, see you guys on the other side. All right. Thank you very much and good evening.